Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, what will carry the industry forward? Well, a uh, lot of different ideas. Let's let's get to one. It says, uh, what do we got? Long time listener, first time caller, total baller. Okay, awesome. Uh, I put it out there. I'm 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 in, okay. I'm up game. It says I just read that Showtime is reducing its digital streaming library, meaning a bunch of recent shows won't be available. HBO is doing something similar. They've they've had done something similar already, actually. Between this trend and the stunning performance of comiXology, is it okay to admit that physical media should be the main focus of the comic industry and digital be the secondary priority? Um, I agree with that statement, but not for that reason. Uh, but we'll, I guess we'll get to why. From the consumer's point of view, how can we justify caring so much about digital when it will be gone tomorrow? Something, 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 Pirate Bay. Hmm. Uh, I, does it, people go still go to the Pirate Bay? I don't think they do. There's a the comic site now is like it's a bunch of numbers like one three eight seven dot pl or I, I mean I don't know. Anyway, it's it's uh, Pirate Bay. I think is old. Anyway, to be clear, I'm not saying digital is dumb and should be forgotten, but maybe it's not the future of the business as we thought it was, or maybe I'm just a cranky old man. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Okay, well here come my thoughts. So uh, first off, um, digital is the future. It is. But that doesn't mean everybody has to shut up and accept the way digital is behaving now. Of course you don't. Digital is not built correctly now. It's not serving the needs of the audience. It's not providing good user experience. So, no, digital, the digital that we are all dealing with right at the moment is definitely not going to win any hearts and minds and not going to pave the way to the future. It won't. But it's still the future. So why, why do I say that? Well, because, you know, there, there, it, it, there are too many advantages to digital, uh, mainly in terms of distribution and price and what it, you know, how ultimately how it can get in the hands of people. It's much quicker to, uh, to push out. There's uh, less logistics and supply chain issues you have to deal with, uh, meaning almost none. Um, it, is, it is much cheaper to produce, and there's a big caveat there, but it is cheaper to produce and to put out. And, and so ultimately, companies are going to do this. It is going to happen. It's not if, it's when. Uh, but it's not going to happen as long as this is the experience and as long as we can't answer the question that you're asking, which is basically, how am I supposed to trust that when I buy into digital, I, you know, I'm going to keep my media, that, I'm, that, I, you know, it's, it's, that it's not going to disappear on me one day? Well... Uh, look, I mean, bluntly, uh, people haven't answered that question in a compelling way. They haven't given people the reason to believe. And until they do, um, yeah, it's, it's not going to work. So, uh, you know, th that definitely, that, that's something that has to, has to come to be fixed. Uh, I think that, you know, digital overall um, it suffers from people trying to go from, I mean, my, my observation is it's trying to suffer. It's, it's, people are trying to go from zero to 60 immediately, not, you know, not accepting or not realizing that in order to build a digital business, it's going to take time and it's going to take effort and it's going to take uh, a lot of misses and it's going to take a lot of investment. That's going to go nowhere. You are, you're going to have to build this business and where comic books are concerned, it feels like they said, we are offering digital comics now. So buy them, same price, or yeah, we'll, we'll take a dollar off the cover price for digital. Um, but, but just go buy them right now. Get yourself an iPad, buy it. And that there, there was, there's been no compelling argument. Why, why should a comp why should somebody do this? Other than it's digital now, go do it. When you're building a business, you have to give people a reason to go there, and you have to give people the confidence that when they go there, their money is well spent. And yeah, this is the, the digital content disappearing is a huge black mark. Now, one distinction here. If you were signing up to a, you know, all you can eat kind of Netflix model where you pay a fee and you get everything, and then sometimes the con content shifts on you, um, that's different. So you can take things away in that model and not suffer consequences because nobody paid for a specific thing. You paid access to this giant library, and as long as the library is big enough, Nobody's really going to bitch if parts about it disappear. I mean, well, don't get me wrong. It's the internet. Certainly people will bitch. But overall, uh, people are understanding if it's an all-you-can-eat and there's tons and tons of content there, people, if some things come and go. They may not like it, 
but they're not going to feel like they were stolen from. If you buy something specific and then it disappears, you no longer have access to it. Sorry, like we've seen with some digital movies and like uh, th there's definitely a, a danger of that with comiXology. Yes, I know some stuff is ported over Kindle, but keep in mind those contracts of the Marvel DC, the publisher contracts with comiXology are not forever. And, you know, if, if they decide to, you know, if, if Disney decides to have a fight with Amazon and pull their contracts or, or basically say, yeah, we're, we're not going to renew, that stuff's going to disappear. And if, it, if the contract is void, your comics are going away. You can look at the terms and conditions on Kindle and on Comixology in that, you know, they, they give themselves the right to remove content you've paid for. It's in, it's in your terms and conditions. It's there. And, and they, they have to do that because contractually they, they don't have rights forever to it. So it's just, it's just how, that's how it works. But regardless, look, um, again, I think people have to look at this and say, what would make digital compelling? Well, certainly giving people the, the trust that their purchases are forever sacred. That would be a big one. Then there needs to be a, yeah, and the price point fits the medium, which means they're probably going to need to be cheaper. They're also going to need to be day and date. So one of the advantages of, of anything digital is that you can get it instantly. You know, you just download it wherever you are. You don't have to go to a shop. It's quick. And Amazon, if you look at when their business really took off, it's when they started, you know, living up to the promise of you order through us, you'll have it tomorrow. When they did that, it was, it was game over. Until that point, you know, they had to convince people that, you know, buying something online, sitting around and waiting for a week, is as convenient to you as you just driving to the store that afternoon and buying it. So that's that's a big factor. So all of these things kind of stack up, but but they will figure it out with digital. Absolutely, it, it's it's coming. Uh, but well, you know, I say they figure it out. Who's they? I don't think it's Marvel or DC. I think that they've proven at this point that they have zero interest in really investing mindshare into those platforms. I would have argued, you know, Amazon had a better shot of it than most because of the type of business they're in. But unfortunately, comics are so insignificant and there was no there's no proof. Basically, they, they did the math and said, you know, these comicsology originals getting into this business ourselves. It's not we're not going to be that's not ever going to be an IP farm like it was for Marvel or DC. And that's a really important point, by the way. A lot of these comic companies are starting out new little independents and they're kind of selling themselves on this idea of we'll build this shared superhero universe and they'll be worth a ton of money. Yeah, maybe it won't. You know, I, I think it works for Marvel and DC because they've been around for 60 plus years. But, you know, for somebody new, the consumers are going, yeah, yeah, we're good. We already have a couple companies. You know, we don't always like all the things that come out of them. But, yeah, we don't need more. You know, you, you haven't given us a reason to have won a third or a fourth. So, you know, we're, we're okay. And that was the flaw of Amazon. I mean, part the backbone of them buying Comixology in that business was that they were going to get into, you know, distribution as content, but also they're going to be able to generate their own IP and compete with the, you know, the Netflix and the Disney Plus. And that that, that was that was the basis for that purchase. And then they figured out it's like, you know what, we can just do a deal with Kirkman over there in Skybound and have Invincible over here, and then we'll do this thing with Dynamite for the boys. And that's uh, that's more cost effective than trying to run our own publishing business. And that's that's how we got here. So anyway, I, I think all these things are factors. Um, the, the digital as you know it, yeah, it's, it's not going to survive. It's, it's definitely, it's definitely going to have to change. And somebody's going to have to bring it. Um, and, and yeah, they've got to answer that question. If I buy it, is it mine? And until, they, until, they, it can, until you can compellingly answer that statement, you're wasting your time. Anyway, that's my opinion. There you go. Let me know yours. And thanks for listening.